Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. It is time for December monthly favorites. And I almost didn't do this video because I didn't want you guys to feel like there were too many favorites videos in a row with me just having completed my 2019 yearly favorites videos. If you haven't seen those, I will link those for you. But with the exception of one product, there is no overlap between this December favorites and my 2019 yearly favorites. I have a little bit of everything in this video, lifestyle, travel, fashion, jewelry, skincare, makeup, and I also have a concealer match update for you guys that some of you have been wondering about. So let's go ahead and get started. If you are not subscribed to this channel, if you have not hit that subscribe button yet, and if you enjoy everyday beauty made easy, that is what my channel is all about. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, become part of the family, and let's go ahead and get into what I loved in the month of December, 2019. Okay, it is just really humid and rainy today and this hair is gonna have to go behind my ears. That's just what we're gonna have to do. All right, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is for all of you Office fans, I guess I should say the US version of The Office. And for those of you who maybe never watched it but thought about it, this is top of mind because I discovered The Office Ladies podcast, which is done by Angela Kinsey and Jenna Fisher, who played Angela and Pam on The Office. I found this podcast, thanks to my niece and nephew, on the way to Atlanta when we went to the Peach Bowl and watched the LSU Tigers win. It is amazing. I love this podcast so much. So they do a weekly rewatch of the show and give you inside tidbits, inside information that is just really funny and fascinating. And they have guest actors and writers and directors on there. The two of them are actually best friends in real life. Jenna is 44, Angela is 48, right in our age bracket. And they just bounce off of each other in such a great way. And I have thoroughly enjoyed listening to it. So. So they're picking back up January 8th with season two, episode four, The Fire. So if you want to catch up, it would be very easy to do because I think the first season is only six episodes and there are four episodes into season two. I am so enjoying this and I plan to just rewatch the series week by week along with them and get all of the background inside information. And sometimes viewers will actually tell them things that they missed because they were on the show, which is pretty cool. So if you have not listened to that, check it out. And if you are listening to it, let me know down below. I have two versions of the next product I'm gonna show you. One is mine, one is Brooks. She had this on her Christmas list. It was one of the top things that she wanted, which is gonna seem surprising because of what it is. So I got this for her for Christmas and I ended up getting one for my mom for Christmas because it was right up her alley as well. And I opened up a present for my mom and she got me one as well. So all three of us ended up getting this for Christmas. And I'm actually gonna hold this up just so you can see the texture, but I'm gonna put a picture in the corner because it's too big to show you here. This is called the Comfy. I think this was on Shark Tank or something, but it's basically a big, huge hoodie that goes down to like your knees or something. It's huge, enormous, soft, cozy. It's not like the slanket or snuggy or whatever. It's more portable. You could bring this to the movies and put it on and it would be a little bit, I don't know, I feel like more compact than a blanket, but warmer than say just a jacket or you could wear it at home. So this is the one that Brooke has. It's got the Sherpa lining on the inside and the one that I have is a little bit thinner. It's more like uh, just a regular pullover soft material. Love, so comfy just to wear around the house, lounge in. And I love my loungewear and it is the perfect thing to have on around the house to just be cozy. And I love things that are soft and cozy. Speaking of soft and cozy, I actually was not gonna wear this sweater in this video, but a lot of you guys asked about it when I wore it in the last video. And I have loved this throughout the month of December. So I decided to go ahead and throw it on in this video because two of my favorite sweaters during December and during the holidays were from Anthropology, And they're the two sweaters that you guys asked me about the most in December. So not only do I like the simplicity and the softness of both of them, but I just love the detail. So the one I have on, of course, is black. And then this one, some of you may recognize from a very recent video that is kind of a boat neck and has these 
soft fuzzy sleeves and they're both kind of long tunic style sweaters and have bubble sleeves which I just think is such a cool detail. Anthropology has sales pretty often but I didn't find these overpriced for anthropology especially not for sweaters because sometimes I just don't even like to shop there because there's things are so overpriced so an impulse purchase for me from anthropology these are no longer available through anthropology I've found them through the actual maker of the earring are these earrings that I had on in one of my recent videos I adore these they look so big but I just find that they look so beautiful for so many occasions I wore them during the holidays but you could wear these to some kind of a fancy event or dinner and they come in so many different colors on the website it's like you could have on the most simple outfit and throw these on and just elevate it so much they're just different than anything I own so let's move into more jewelry that I loved and wore a ton in December and that you guys asked me about the most in December as well. Now the two necklaces that I have on, I added this one and layered these a ton and the look is just really cool. So I've enjoyed wearing that in December a lot. And this necklace right here, which I think is so pretty and delicate and appropriate for so many occasions. I have been saving it for kind of dressy occasions, but you could wear this again to dinner or wherever. I just think it's so beautiful. And for earrings, the ones that I have on, which I really enjoy wearing for casual looks as well as dressy looks because they do have a little bit of sparkle right there. And then these just simple little hoops with some bling in them. And these look really great with that last necklace that I just showed. Really, really great. I think I wore those in a video together recently. Now, I've never been a big cuff bracelet person until I got these two cuff bracelets, which I just love. And I'm hoping that the light is not reflecting too much. They open and close really easily just by pushing right there and just clasp. And I like that the detail is just a little bit different on each of them. And I'm liking layering a lot. I just think it gives such a cool vibe and it really can just amp up an outfit, make something a little bit dressier, a little less plain. So I've just been doing that a lot lately with a couple of the Goriana bracelets that I have as well as some that are Mignon Faget that I have been wearing for a long time. So those are the jewelry pieces that I've been loving in December. I have a few travel pieces that I've really been enjoying and then I'm going to get into the beauty stuff. So I ordered a couple of these cosmetic cases from Truffle. I keep some things in here, so that's why there's a few things that are still in here. I use this one for my skincare, and you just really set it down and unzip it, and it opens and lays flat, which I love. And this comes in several colors. And this is the one that is a little bit bigger that I used for makeup. This looks really dirty in this lighting, but it's really not. I think it's just the angle that I'm holding it. So when you open this side up, which I already unzipped, you have this kind of shallower side. I'm hoping you can tell how shallow this is. There's a strap here that will hold makeup brushes or just longer things that you have. You don't have to use the strap, but this is just a side that is a little bit more shallow. I think you can tell from that angle how shallow that is. So if you flip it over, I still keep a few travel things in here. They just, they live in here. This is the deeper side. This held all of my makeup very, very easily. I have a thing for clear bags. I don't know what it is. I just, I love them. I love being able to see everything at a glance. And I've just, I've really been liking these. They traveled well. They packed very compactly, which I appreciate. I have a thing for organization. It's just part of who I am. I always buy new bags. I'm always trying new ways of packing and organizing, and I'm really, really enjoying these. Speaking of travel bags, I got a new travel bag. This is from Fawn Design. Some of you may have seen this on Instagram. I think they had a 20% off over the holidays, and I kind of got this for overnight type trips when I go stay with my mom or wherever. There are two pockets 
one on each side, and then you have a front pocket and a zipper pocket. And if you open it up, ignore what I leave in here. I do leave my packing cubes in here. You can see there are pockets on the side. There are seven of these slip pockets that are divided, and then there's one zipper pocket. It's very well made, very well organized. I'm really impressed with it. Now, I did bring this to Atlanta when we recently went, and it wasn't quite big enough for that trip because I wasn't quite sure what I was bringing, and I brought a couple of pairs of shoes that I probably didn't need to bring. So I did need an extra side tote for that trip, even though it was just like a couple of days. But like I said, I wasn't quite sure what I needed, what I was gonna wear for certain things. But I think if you're just going on a trip that's a night or two that you know exactly what you need and you need a bag that is just, you know, not super big, but not too tiny, it's a great size. If you're looking for a very organized bag. I just finally decided to bite the bullet. Okay, so let's talk about skincare really quickly and then I will get into the makeup. Some of you know how much I love the Amore Pacific Essence. It has done wonders for my skin in terms of keeping it balanced and reducing the look of my pores. It's amazing and I know those of you who have tried it feel the exact same way I do about it. It's just kind of a miracle in a bottle. It really is just just beautiful. And I've had several of you ask me to compare it to the SK2 and the Tatcha essences. And that's a little easier said than done because those are very pricey essences. And that is like a 300, maybe $400 test just to compare those three products. I have not tried those other two essences, but what I did try during December is the Misha, or is it Misha? I don't know, first treatment essence. And I have heard that this is a dupe for the SK2 essence. So I thought, you know, why not? I'll try it. Now, one thing I don't like about it is that I feel like the bottle leaks a little bit. Like I feel like there's always something on the outside of the bottle. So the bottle is not as good as the Amore Pacific bottle, that's for sure. If I had to travel with it, I would have to decant it. It's like when you put the lid on, it just dribbles out the side. It's very, very weird. So how I use an essence and how most people use essences is after you cleanse and tone, you just take some into the palms of your hands or onto your fingertips and just press it onto your skin. And they all do different things for the skin. They provide benefits that penetrate the skin deeply, deeper than uh, some other skincare can penetrate the skin. This is a cult favorite and has like four and five stars everywhere I look. It is supposed to repair damage and even out skin tone in just a few weeks. It has over 90% fermented yeast extract from Himalayan purple barley to plump skin, refine texture, and reduce pigmentation. So the fermentation process, which is what is also in the Amore Pacific essence, is what allows skin to retain moisture longer and restores skin elasticity, which is what gives pores such a great look. This has niacinamide in it, which also brightens the skin and also reduces the look of pores. This has a pH of 5.5. I have to say I've really been enjoying this. I feel like this is doing pretty much what the Amori Pacific is doing at a fraction of the cost. I love both. I think they're great. This one I have been, you know, just as pleased with. So if you are looking to spend a little bit less on an essence, but still get a good quality performer, you may want to check out the Misha First Essence Intensive Moist, which sounds odd coming from someone who has oily combination skin, but it really does a great job at keeping my skin balanced balanced and clarified. This is a product that I've used before in my life and I loved it, I adored it, it's pricey and so it's not something that I purchase regularly. I bought it over the holidays when I could get 20% off, I think it was 20%. And I really wish I had gotten the big jumbo size because I forgot how great this really was for my dry body skin. This is Kiehl's Cream Decor Body Lotion. Those of you who have used this know exactly what I'm talking about. This is truly skin transformative. I'm putting it in this video because number one, I've never talked about it on my channel before. And number two, I just adored this in December because I was having such dry, 
flaky body skin. I know that sounds gross, but it says on the bottle that it's for extremely dry or flaking skin. It's enriched with the finest ingredients known to Kiehl's for a rich, elegant skin texture. Continued use for 10 days will provide a skin texture heretofore unattainable. That is quite a claim. And I remember the first day I started to use it, I was thinking, we'll see, we'll see about that. Sure enough, day 10, my skin was so much softer. It didn't flake anymore. It was so moisturized. And then on day, I would say 15, it was just so smooth. I'm hoping <laughs> that this is something that I can use maybe twice a week with other moisturizers in between and maintain that because this is a little pricey for me to keep using every single day. Although I don't need to use as much of it with each use as I did when I first started. What I also love about it is that there is basically no scent to it. So you're not slathering your body with shea butter scent or anything like that. It's just a good quality body lotion. And even some of the body lotions that I love that do well for me, they do well up to a point, but my body is still pretty dry this time of year. And this is just something that just rescues it, completely rescues it. As we move to the makeup section, I need to give you guys a concealer shade update for the Jeffree Star concealer that I have been using. I initially bought shade C13 because I did a little research and thought that was what would match me best, but it turned out to be a little bit too light and too brightening. I want to say that's the shade that Tati used, and we usually use kind of similar concealer shades. I can make it work, but it's just a little bit light, especially if it's not just the dead of winter and I'm using a deeper foundation shade. So I did a little bit more research and I ended up purchasing shade C11. And you can see on the screen that shade C13 has that yellow brightening tone to it while C11 has just a more neutral tone to it, which is what I personally need underneath my eyes. And because it doesn't have that light, yellowy, brightening tone to it, it is a little bit deeper and it just works a little bit better underneath my eyes. This is such a smoothing, beautiful concealer underneath the eyes. It's almost anti-aging. This concealer probably creases the least out of any concealer I've ever tried. Uh, it's just beautiful. But if there's one complaint I have about it, it is the shade range. They have a ton of shades, but when you get into that light medium segment, it becomes really, really hard. I feel like shades are either way too pale or they're way dark. There's just not that many to choose from kind of around my skin tone or even just a tiny bit deeper. This is what I settled on. I do wish there was something maybe hair darker, but this works so much better than the C13. My final product, which is the overlap product that I talked about in my 2019 yearly makeup favorites, is the Daniel Sandler Watercolor Blush. I have three of these. The one that I have on today is called Cherub. This is the pinkiest of the three that I have. The one that I probably wear the most is called Caress. I learned about these from my friend Shelby Wilson, and I, I think this is the one that she wears the most, and we have different skin tones. So Cherub, I feel like, is very, very universal. It's just a little bit warmer, more neutral, a little bit peachy, just very flattering. And then I have another shade called Rose Glow, which is also very, very beautiful and has a little bit of a sheen to it. Now, the reason why Shelby has been raving about these and why I am now jumping on this bandwagon and shouting my love for these from the rooftops is because they are so easy to apply. They last all day and they just look beautiful on the skin and they truly make you look like you're glowing from within. If you are intimidated by liquid blushes, stick cream blushes, but you want that look, these are the ones that you should go for. You can apply these under your powder or over your powder. Either way, they are going to look gorgeous and they are going to last you all day long. Even if you have oily skin, 
these last on the skin and they're super quick to apply. So the best way to apply these is to drop out one or two drops onto the back of your hand and swirl it around with your brush until it's dry. You think it's not going to pick up any more product, but it will. And then just take what's on the brush and tap that onto your cheek. You don't want to apply it when it's too wet because it's going to take off what's on your face already because if you apply a liquid to a powder or over your existing foundation sometimes it takes off that product this is just the best way to apply them and that pigment will just look beautiful and like it is just born on your face it is so so pretty and it just feels like nothing it dries down it's not tacky i feel like i will be talking about these non-stop in 2020 so just beware you will be hearing more about the Daniel Sandler watercolor blushes from me in 2020. It never fails when I have a brush love or a brush set love that's from Beautylish. It ends up being out of stock and then it says returning soon for months. And so I never know if it's actually going to end up back in stock because that's what happened with the Sonia G Sky face set. It's one of my favorite face sets and it's been returning soon for forever, but I can't not share my love of the Wayne Goss Holiday 2019 brush. First of all, this is so beautiful. Secondly, this is the easiest brush in the world to use for bronzer or face powder or contour or all of the above. It's so soft, it's tapered perfectly. Like you're never gonna get that contour helmet. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I'm someone who's not really a huge fan of fan brushes. Oh, but see what I did there. And both of the ones that I love the most are returning soon to Beautylish. Now I think Sonia G does have one that is not in a set that is kind of similar to the one in the Sky set, but I wanted to show you a comparison of the Sonia G Sky set worker fan brush and the Wayne Goss. So here you have the thickness comparison and here you have the size comparison. I just find I can get such a beautifully blended contour. I can do all of my bronzer, all of my contour. It gets the jawline. It's very quick, yet it does exactly what it needs to do. So you may want to put this on your wish list if you can. I'm not sure if you can do that while it's out of stock or not, but this is such a beautiful brush. Wayne has done it yet again, as he always does, and he just created perfection. So yes, I've been loving this. Let me know what you got in December that you loved. And if you have not seen my best of 2019 and my worst of 2019, I'll have a link here for you to check out. I did not do a lifestyle video. I don't know. I don't think it's too late to do one. If you want to see lifestyle products that I love, let me know. I can always put that out in January. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.